I, I have to do this to even see it. <laughs> Barely. Barely. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get this night started. So, my name is Anita, a.k.a. CBD Genie. Oh, thank you. I will be your, yeah, thank you. I'll be your MC this evening. I'll be your MC this evening. So, before we get started, I want to give the, the shout outs, the thank yous. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Angela Tharp, always, for providing the stage, providing Flamingo Cantina, so we can openly discuss cannabis, right? I want to I want to thank Texas Normal, the national organization for the reform of marijuana laws, right? Thank you for continuing to move forward in the political movement, right? Thank you for putting on the lobby days at the Capitol, right? Thank you for trusting me to MC. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Thanks, Dave. Thank you guys for showing up. Like, literally, every single one of you for showing up. Because we could all be home, toasty, right? Laying in our beds right now. Thank you for. <laughs> that's right. Medicating. But you guys chose to come out here, and that is the most important part. It is this. It is this movement. It is this happening and this people coming together, right? So thank you for showing up. Thank you so much. So maybe you knew, maybe you didn't, but on March 4th, Monday, at the Capitol was Patient Lobby Day. Yes. <laughs> Right after that was the House Bill 63 hearing. All I want to say about this is I want to give a shout out and thank you to every single person who testified. The people who voiced, they literally voiced their support for the penalty reduction in Texas with cannabis. Thank you. They're the ones that deserve the biggest round of applause right now. Yes. So, the one thing that I've noticed the most, just the common denominator during this cannabis serendipitous journey that I've been on is the lack of cannabis education. My lane, my focus, my passion is educating the biochemistry of cannabis, right? I want to be able to discuss the systems of the body. I want to be able to discuss the compounds and understanding the phytocannabinoids, the terpenes, the flavonoids, right? So since this evening is going to be focused on a, a science-based cannabis talk, I wanted to just start getting our minds thinking that way. So what I'm going to do, because there's so many methods of administration for cannabis, I just wanted to talk about three in particular this evening. The first one I want to talk about is inhalation right so when you inhale the system that is working is your respiratory system right your lungs the function here is exchanging gases right you're you're inhaling oxygen exhaling co2 that is the function of the respiratory system right well if you use a topical say you're using a topical now this time well, now we're talking about your inti okay, this is a tough one for me to say, Inte integumentary system, which is just a fancy pants word for your skin. That's it. But, you're, you, but it's, it's important. That system is important. Your skin protects you. Your skin absorbs, right? What else? Let's talk about ingestion, your edibles. That's a completely different system, you guys. That's your digestive system. Now we're talking about the stomach. We're talking about it getting broken down, the liver, right? The enzymes in the liver. So now let's talk about the flower for a moment. <laughs> Depending on 
wherever the, if I'm holding a raw flower, the bud right here in my hand, and since we all know about THC, I'm just going to talk about the compound THC. If I have the flower in my hand in its raw form, it's THC-A. It's the acidic form. As soon as I heat it, decarboxylate it, now we're talking about delta-9 THC. If it's been aged, that's, a different, that's different compounds as well. So now I want to go back to the systems of the body that we just discussed. If you inhale decarbed THC, delta-9 THC, that is the compound that is going into the lungs and into the bloodstream. Why is it different when you have an edible? Remember, it's a different system. When you ingest delta-9 THC, remember your digestive system, it needs to break down. Your system needs to break down anything you ingest to absorb the nutrients and get rid of the waste, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, when you ingest delta-9 THC, the metabolite is 11-hydroxy THC. This is the compound that makes the difference in the medicated feel that you feel. So really, I'm not teaching any, you know about your skin, you know about your lungs, you know about your digestive system. What I like to do is bring it all back together and tie a nice little bow on top of it and introducing phytocannabinoids and how they work with the system. Introducing terpenes, discussing their therapeutic properties and how that nature can benefit us. Because really everything that is synthetically made in the lab is just a replica of nature. That's all it is. Yeah. So, this evening, I want to introduce a couple of friends of mine. So, our first speaker joining us this evening is Cree Crawford. That's Cree Crawford. He is the co-founder, the president of Green Ocean Sciences Incorporated, Ionization Labs. He is a C-level development and management executive in science and technology professional. He has over 25 years documented success working in both the private and government sectors developing, operating, and growing successful operations from concept to multi-million dollar organizations. <laughs> His professional experience in development of science and technology combined with his passion for medical application of cannabis promoted him to launch Green Ocean Sciences Incorporated Ionization Labs in 2016. Cree is an advisor and board member for the United Patients Group. He is a published writer, an expert for the cannabis and hemp space with articles ongoing published on LinkedIn and in trade publications like Terpenes and Testing Magazine. He maintains an international consultancy focused on legal cannabis and hemp operational development and will be producing a video series called Odd Leaf Stories, highlighting some of cannabis and hemp industry's most interesting people and technology. I know a couple of interesting people in this room. A couple, a few. So let Cree know who you are just because uh, FYI, Odd Leaf Stories might be in your future. Cree is a CAS graduate of Georgetown University, Washington, DC. Crawford was given the title of H Wing Commander, 149th Fighter Wing, Gunfighters, Texas Air National Guard for his leadership and cooperative relationships with the US Air Force Tang and Joint Base San Antonio, 502nd Air Base Wing, Lackland. He will present an overview of their new scalable testing solution program that will solve many pain points within the legal cannabis and hemp industry. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome for my friend, Cree. Oh, 
Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, I want to tell everybody how we met. So um, this fall, we were in Las Vegas at uh, MJ BizCon, and a business partner of mine and I were walking into the uh, this huge convention center, and we were wearing lab coats just because it's a nice way to get to meet people, and people come up and ask you questions. And Anita came right up to us, and she's like, hey, I want to talk to you guys. And within a couple of seconds of the conversation, we were asking where we were from, and Austin, Texas, out of you know, everybody in the whole freaking you know, Las Vegas area. So it was great. So thank you, Anita. It's a pleasure. It's a real pleasure to speak to a hometown, our hometown normal group. Um, and uh, wow, great shout out to everybody. And what an exciting time in our state. Wow, we're so close, so close. Um, just to uh, add a little bit of color to uh, what Anita said, um, I was involved in um, investment and management of a bunch of collectives out in California, Northern California gave me a really good insight and hands on, you know, digging in the earth and really growing and uh, working with some of the best growers uh, in, in Northern California. And one of the things that kept popping up about six years ago when we would take our product into the dispensaries was uh, testing. California, the dispensaries were starting to ask for COAs. That's, and, and, and these are reports uh, for safety and also to describe what the plant was that you were ingesting. And something struck me and I said, there's got to be something here because the more successful the business becomes and the more successful the industry becomes, the more testing is going to be required because if you're going to call something medicine, you better darn well make sure it's not going to harm you in any other way. And there's a lot of stuff out there. So amen. Yeah. So um, my partner and I came up with a concept to have an in-house, in-field, in-garden testing product. Uh, that would allow people to get as accurate a test as lab. And we spent a lot of time developing our own, and we built our own uh, something called the HPLC. It's a high-performance liquid chromatography device. And what it does is it takes a liquid injection, and it tells you what's in the sample, what's in the plant. And it's a cannabinoid, is what we're looking at. Um, and if anybody wants to look when they're, when they're on their phones or anything, it's uh, ionizationlabs.com. We'll kind of show you what we do, ionization, I-O-N-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N, labs. And contrary to popular belief, we're not a lab, uh, but we develop, uh, we're at, the, at our core, we are a software and data analytics company. But what we had to do is develop a platform that would be able to take in this relevant data. And it has to be scalable because we want everybody to be able to use it. It has to be cost effective. It has to be accurate because what's the point of having data that's not accurate? Right? So along the way, we decided to partner up with an incredible group called Agilent. And Agilent is one of the top manufacturers of analytical devices in the world. They're very complicated machines. You need a PhD to run them. And what we did was we went in and we spent a lot of time and effort to create a software overlay to turn this chemical analysis device into a tool, and a tool with one job. And that job is to offer a cannabinoid profile. And we can do 15 cannabinoids right now in 15 to 20 minutes, which is pretty incredible. The average lab turnaround in the United States right now, because our industry is becoming so successful and because of the farm bill with hemp, is two weeks to get a report back. You can't run an industry waiting for two weeks to get a report back. You've got raw material coming in. You want to decide if you're going to buy it. You've got to wait two weeks. You can't wait two weeks. So. We set out to create a solution for this whole problem. And what we've done is created a solution that, again, is very simple to operate. We've cut the cost of test down from a national average of $75. Growers and extractors are having to pay an average of $75 to get a test run before they can sell their product. That's a lot. And that's, that's, that's a median. There, it goes up as high as $250 just for a potency test in some states. So our tests run about $30 a test. We actually give you the device. So it's just like the cell phone model, is it, you know, like our data models. And this is allowing us to scale. Now, I bring this up because scale and distribution of a solution like this is the only way to capture as much data as fast as possible out there in the field. And when you have data points, you've got access to powerful information that's going to be able to revolutionize the application of a cannabis from a patient standpoint 
and from an industry standpoint. So with that, I'm going to talk about something else. So that's cannabinoids. So we can do 15 cannabinoids right now. We also have another solution coming out, which is something called the GC, which is gas chromatography device. That actually measures terpenes. And terpenes, I'm not sure if everybody knows what that is, but that's short for phytoterpenes, right? And that gives our plants its taste, its smell, and combined with cannabinoids, gives us our medicinal value. This is very exciting, right? And as you can imagine, every plant or every strain is different. Now, not only is every strain different, somebody growing over here in California, they're going to be growing, I don't know, give me a strain name. Give me a fun strain name, somebody. Blue Dream. Dream. Okay. Oh, classic. Somebody up in Northern California and Humboldt's growing Blue Dream there. And then somebody out in New York's growing it. It's going to taste and smell and, and react differently to you. It's just like, and if you'll allow me, I'm going to say this is just like the grape, the table wine grape, right? You can have the same grape varietal growing in one AVI and then another one, and it's going to taste different. It's got a different thing. And that's exactly what we have with cannabis. It's a very strong uptake plant which means it's going to pull in all the surrounding characteristics of the soil, the water, everything. So we've got a really complex, incredible plant. And there's a reason for it. It's because it does incredible things to specific people, right? Amen. So now, again, I'm coming back to why I'm not trying to pitch my company, but I'm telling you why I'm passionate about what we have. And it's capturing data. And if you can combine cannabinoids with terpene profile, and it's all chemistry, you've got something that we can call is a chemotype. So instead of calling something Blue Dream, which is going to be different than Blue Dream here and there, we're going to come up with a chemotype. So this chemotype, which is a specific combination of terpenes and cannabinoids, might actually be, oh, I don't know, another strain name, right? A totally different strain name. But what you've got is a consistency of the chemical profile, and that's <coughs> what we're working on. And with my with what we're doing and what we're setting out to do, we will be able to capture all this data in real time by providing a tremendous tool to the industry. Now, what is the, important of the, the importance of this? If we have a device that's really simple to use, I could train anybody here in probably five hours how to run this, this device. And it's the same platform that they're using in the certification labs all around the country. And if you've got that, and you're able to run it and it's taking away a lot of the variables so you can you get consistent results you're gonna get the similar results that you are in-house as you are in the lab in the certification lab and what does that do that gives you confidence as a grower and as a cultivator to know what you've got in your hand now really quickly one of the really exciting things and th that we're trying to do that gets me up every day is that once we deploy these devices around the country around the world even we'll be able to start gathering all this data. And all this data can be processed to create patient overlays. And with a patient overlay, meaning what does it do for you specifically, you've got a tremendous movement. So I deploy, say, 100 of these units at all the different uh, colleges and universities around the country that are doing cannabis testing. And we open it up to do free, free testing. So come in and test your stuff. Let me see your bag. We're going to test it. You bring in the product that you're using for your specific therapy, and you're going to answer, uh, this is all anonymous, but can you imagine how fast we can get this data? This is so exciting. You fill out the form, you know, your age, your weight, your eye, everything, all these great things. And then you get to the point where it's like, why are you taking it? Are you taking it for anxiety? Are you taking it for appetite suppressant? Are you taking it for oh, a number of things? There's, there's many, millions of reasons for people take it. And how effective is that? Then we take that questionnaire, and we test the product, and we take that chemotype and layer it in with the patient profile. And after a number of data points, thousands of data points, you start going, this chemotype is really good for sleep, or it's really good for anxiety. And with that, you've got something that's changed the world. And that's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to do something great for cannabis, something great for all its users. And you know, we just have to be on the science side, which is really exciting. So anyway, I really appreciate everybody being here. If there's any questions, let me know. Uh, I've never done this before, but. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Hey, man. Um, oh. You uh, talked about the pricing being uh, 
really high in some states and then you're trying to make it reasonable. Um, how do uh, business people figure that price? What calculations are they making when, the, when they set that price? So are you saying their opinion on the price that we set or in the uh, difference? Any, any person, when they're like, how much should I charge for this, what, what data are they trying to do? Oh, for, for testing, sir? Yeah, or? yeah, your price for your service. Okay, so what we did was we paid a firm to call uh, tons of growers and, and, cult and extractors around the country, and we took, a, we took an average of all the different states. I think we called 50 uh, extractors and cultivators in each state and then we took a national average on the, what they were paying for each potency test and in order for us to stay in business we had to get it to a point but we're keeping it as low as possible and it's not just this is the other thing we did we created a subscription so normally if you just went and bought one of these devices it's like here you go here's a sixty thousand dollar device good luck to you what we've done is we're giving you the device we're training you and then we're also providing all of the consumables every month so it's, it's basically having your own potency lab for one price every month. It's just like your data, like on a cell phone. But anyway, we came up with a price we thought was fair. Everybody's really excited about it. Nobody's really complained. Thank you for your question. Yeah. What is that price? It's $30, $30 a test. It's what it averages out to be, and that includes the machine and the consumables and everything. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, this is from Christopher Dickerson online. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. We're online. Um, <laughs> Woo! What's up, world? <laughs> um, first off, if you could restate your name and what company you're from, and also the name of that device, and maybe how to spell it or Google it, okay. it would be great. Yes, so my name is Cree, C-R-E-E, -E, Crawford. It's my middle name. It's what I've gone by my whole life. Um, the name of the company is Ionization Labs. That's I-O-N. I Z A T I O N L A B S, and that's a dot com. The solution we call is Can ID, C A N N I D. That's the solution, and um, the the product we use is an HPLC. The platform we use is an HPLC, High Performance Liquid Chromatography. And uh, and I thank everybody so much for your time. This has been an honor. Thank you, Cree, for that enlightening info. Great job. If you guys want to talk to Cree, he's still hanging around. Definitely network with him. So let's keep the momentum going. Our next speaker, another dear friend of mine, Nisha Whiteley is a board member and resource director for Texas Normal's sister organization, Foundation for an Informed Texas. Yes, I like that. She is the director for America's Business Development and a member of the management team for the International Cannabis and Cannabinoid Institute, headquarters in Prague, Czech Republic, where she works closely with global medical cannabis expert, Dr. Ethan Russo, to bring science to the forefront of the cannabis industry. Nisha has 25 years of international business development experience in agriculture, wellness, green energy, and food industries. A lay expert in medical cannabis, she is the author of the acclaimed book, Chronic Relief. I highly recommend reading. Highly recommend, you can get that on Amazon. <laughs> chronic Relief, a guide to cannabis for the terminally and chronically ill. And the website for that is www.mychronicrelief.com. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome my friend, Nisha Whiteley. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you, Dave. I'd like to thank Anita for inviting me to speak this evening. And my topic is the state of cannabis science. And there is so much going on in the cannabis space. I just want to say that it's incredibly difficult to keep up with all the amazing things that are happening 
that really prove what most of us already knew, that the cannabis plant is an amazing plant and offers a treasure trove of healing for so many people who are suffering and who find that pharmaceuticals really aren't meeting their needs. So how many of you have kept up with what's going on with cannabis in the international space? Have anybody following it? So you're probably aware that in January, the World Health Organization actually recommended that, recommended to the UN, excuse me, that they remove cannabis and cannabis resins from their schedule four. And this is a, a really positive step in the right direction. And what it means for federal governments is that it's gonna be much easier for them to legalize cannabis for medicinal and for even recreational use. And that it's gonna be much easier to actually conduct real science. Um, but that statement's a little bit misleading because a lot of real science is actually being conducted uh, not so much of it here in the United States of America, unfortunately, but in other countries. And uh, I'm sure that many of you have been to the Capitol. How many have been this go round? All right, great. Keep it up. So I want to share some stats with you that you can certainly use when people tell you, oh, well, we just don't have enough information. And you can share with them that actually your misinformed and <laughs> what we do know is that cannabis is a safe and efficacious medicine no one as all of you know has ever died from utilizing cannabis can we say that about opiates no, no? and there are many other drugs that we simply can't say that about including sleeping pills even aspirin aspirin uh, causes approximately a thousand deaths a year in this country and that's sold over the counter. So when people tell you we don't have enough information about cannabis or we don't have enough science, you can invite them to take a look at PubMed. PubMed is our government repository of all the science that has been um, submitted to clinical journals. And currently, if you do a search on PubMed, for the term cannabis or the word cannabis, it will come back with one, I need my glasses, 19,459 results. The term cannabinoids will come back with over 16,000. Endocannabinoid system is over 7,000. And endocannabinoids has a whopping 24,000 plus, actually 24,765 entries. Now, not all of those are going to be positive about uh, cannabis, but a large majority of them do show that cannabis is a safe and efficacious medicine, and that the federal government, who says that it is a dangerous medicine, is also misinformed. So when we visit clinicaltrial.gov, this is available to all of you on your smartphones, your web, through the web. Clinicaltrial.gov is tracking all of the clinical trials and observational trials that are being done throughout the world. And what we know is that uh, 406 trials have been done um, for cannabis or that have cannabis in the name of the trial and then they have 150 are currently being recruited. So we have 781 results will come back when you type the word cannabis into their search function. And again, uh, not all of those are going to have completely positive results, but many of them do. And where we aren't getting positive results on the, on the research, it allows us to utilize that information to help make cannabis safer for a larger number of people. You know, we um, have a lot of great information where we know that cannabis is really good for many indications. And I'd like to share with you where we have a lot of information. And so those um, conditions are for nausea and vomiting, anorexia associated with chemotherapy, HIV and AIDS, 
spasticity and multiple sclerosis and other neuro neurological conditions. Neuropathic pain. This is something that three to four and a half million Americans suffer from. And the vast majority of people who have neuropathic pain are gonna find that the pharmaceuticals that they're taking, frankly, are inadequate. And that cannabis, in many cases, can be used without any other pharmaceuticals. And when cannabis isn't enough, the patient can take a much lower amount of opiates uh, prescribed opiates and what the cannabis is going to do for the opiates is it allows um, the opiate to be far more effective which means the patient takes a much lower dose and therefore is at a lower risk of addiction and they have less side effects so this is this is a very positive step in my opinion especially when you consider the fact that uh, the, the stat keeps changing frequently, but approximately 70 people a day die in this country from opiate overdose. Wow is right. Another area where we have quite a bit of information that shows that cannabis is a, is a um, good medicine is in cancer pain and then in lower urinary tract symptoms. Um, we also find that for CBD, we have a tremendous amount of evidence uh, in the area of intractable epilepsy. And as all of you know here in Texas, uh, intract intractable epilepsy is the only condition for which cannabis is an approved use in our state. And it's only allowed in uh, low CBD concentration. So THC is illegal, unfortunately. And then we also find that CBD may actually be very effective in helping treat schizophrenia. However, there is some research that shows that it may also have some negative effects. So what we really need to figure out about schizophrenia is why are we getting those results? And so even though uh, we do get neg negative results, in some of these clinical trials, what that teaches us is to ask better questions so that we can understand why. Why are we getting those negative results? What does it teach us? And what uh, questions do we need to investigate as a result of that information? So where we have some, some holes, and you'll hear people say all the time, as I mentioned, previously, oh, well, we just don't have enough information. And it's true, we always want more information, and as the science grows, uh, we're gonna have more questions. But right now, we know for sure that no one is gonna be killed by cannabis unless a couple of thousand pounds drop from the sky on top of their head, <laughs> which I'm not aware that that's ever happened either. Best death ever. Best death ever, yes, all right. So uh, we do have some, some areas where we would like to, to see much more study. And let me scroll through there. So these priorities are gonna include pain and inflammation, because if you think about it, what are the common denominators of disease? Inflammation, pain oxidation. So clinical research in this area would benefit a lot of people who are suffering. Also arthritis, both rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, metabolo excuse me, metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance, anything that's related to acne, psoriasis and contact dermatitis. Uh, neuroprotection in Alzheimer's and dementia. I think that there is um, tremendous hope for people with Alzheimer's, and I think that you know the research that we currently have in place indicates that cannabinoids actually can help dissolve the amyloid plaques, which are the hallmarks of or the hallmark of Alzheimer's. So the plaques will reside in the brain and they interfere with the patient's ability to remember. It interferes with personality. 
And if you uh, know someone with Alzheimer's, you know it's a, it's a very sad disease. And to be able to provide relief to these patients and their family uh, would go a long way to improving quality of life for everyone who is affected by it. Uh, also, important study area is PTSD. Um, we have such um, momentum at the moment, thanks to our veterans who have come out in droves to articulate to our legislature. Yes. So we should be very thankful to them for helping reduce stigma about cannabis. And you know, as a result of the veterans in this country who have come forward to talk about how cannabis has benefited them, we actually have a lot of research being done in this area that I think over the next probably five years, we're gonna learn um, is really helping people with PTSD on many levels. It's helping to uh, balance the brain. It's going to help balance hormones. And it makes it possible for people who suffer from PTSD to get enough space from their uh, health challenges and um, mental imbalances that they're going to be able to uh, get healthy, get good sleep, and then be able to really talk about what their experience was so at some point they'll be able to um, move past it in a healthy way. It doesn't mean to forget it, but to be able to survive and function in a, in a full, healthy, happy way and live um, you know, an active life, which a lot of people with PTSD don't. And if you, if you don't know anybody who suffers from that, it's another incredibly debilitating disease. So what are some areas that, um, you know, are challenging in the cannabis space? Uh, the biggest issue is that we need more long-term studies and they're coming. We need more people to participate in those studies. And one of the biggest challenges that we have right now with getting people to participate in a cannabis research study, especially if it includes um, a non-pharmaceutical type preparation, so if they are taking uh, an oil or if it includes vaporization, uh, people are really picky about their cannabis, and if they use cannabis before, it's unlikely that you are going to get them to be able to uh, participate in a U.S. federal government cannabis study because the cannabis is so bad. So uh, we're seeing a lot of success in other countries, such as the Czech Republic, which is where um, the International Cannabis and Cannabinoids Institute is headquartered. We're also seeing fabulous work being done in Australia, as well as um, Italy, Spain, Israel, Canada. And I think in the next uh, two to five years, we'll see a lot of really interesting work coming out of some of the Latin American countries. So. It's exciting times ahead for all of us in the cannabis space, and I'll just leave you with this, that if um, you have an opportunity to visit with anyone who is in a position of power, legislators, please let them know that we have a phenomenal amount of science about this incredibly benevolent plant and that more is coming, and that what we know for sure is that it is safe versatile and effective medicine. Thank you all for being here. Okay, I understand there's a question. I'm gonna give you the mic so you can ask it. And I can't see you. That's great, thank you. Um, everything you said just Fine. How are you going to convince Greg Abbott to not veto a bill? So Jax has the answer, but I will say that I'm not going to convince him 
The people with sick children and the veterans who have fought for our country, they are going to convince him. And I will support them in providing the science to back up whatever it is they have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nisha Whiteley. So I'm hoping that this evening triggered some science going on in your minds, right? Science. But now, science. Talk nerdy to me anytime, you guys. So now what I want to do is introduce Jax, the executive director for Texas Normal. She's going to come up here, and she's going to let us know about the political side of cannabis. Yes, here we go. Appreciate you. All right, so I am going to take this opportunity in a very long way to answer your question because it's multifaceted. Yeah. And I need to tell you the things we've been doing and the things we're going to be doing so that you understand how we're going to change Greg Abbott's mind because we don't have to change it that much. Let's start with the fact that he already has said in debate that he hears from mothers of children with autism and veterans compelling stories about medical cannabis. So we're going to start with that. We're going to start with that we have an open door with him and that he's listening to us. And so how can we help him listen to other conditions and other points that we're making? So let's go back to what we've done this month. Y'all, it's been busy. Okay? Busy. Woo! It has been baptism by fire if you've never been to the Capitol before. And if you are, you're just like a jaded person going like, yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Um, so I would like to start, first of all, um, in February. Um, we had Citizen Lobby Day. If you were there, you know you know we filled a lob uh, an auditorium that seats 350 people and we filled them from people all over the state we had almost every senator district covered and we had three quarters of the house district covers if you don't know there are 30 senate districts and 151 house districts so that is a lot of people from a lot of different areas so give all of them a round of applause But then we weren't done yet. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. We made a splash with Veterans Lobby Day, which was on the 25th. We had a um, training session where we got all the veterans together, and they went out in groups to speak with their legislators. But we also put together an educational exhibit that was extremely powerful. If you didn't see it online, it was a casket that was made by one of our advisors that was filled with pill bottles from veterans that are from Texas with personal stories about why medical cannabis is effective for them and why they need access. And those are personal letters, each one of them, to Governor Abbott about why they need access. And let me tell you, it caused a stir. Quite a few heads turn when there is a casket at the Capitol, friends. And um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that lightly or to, or to joke because it's a very serious matter. But in all honesty, it was powerful. It was moving. And if they didn't know that we were there already, they knew that day. And they knew that we're not going to stop and that veterans are going to help be the tip of the spear for all patients here in Texas. Because veterans made it very clear that while they need access for service-connected disabilities, they fought for the freedoms of all Americans and the right for them to choose whichever medicine they want to use for their health issue. So I appreciate everyone that was there. It was an amazing day. We had a lot of um, really heartfelt conversations. A lot of important legislators, including the speaker, walked by and saw our display. So it was extremely important. We even had a video playing with stories from different veterans across the state um, and testimony from them. So it was a really powerful, interactive display and exhibit. And then uh, we had the patient lobby day on the 4th of this month, which you missioned. Just so happened, surprise, also a hearing day. No big deal, it's fine. It's fine, you guys. Uh, so patient lobby day was early. We started it off early, and uh, coffee was provided by Grav Labs. So thanks to them. If you ever uh, shop with them, they're pretty awesome. 
And we gave up, of course, we always do a training, you guys. We're not going to just like feed you to the Capitol unprepared. So we did a training. Um, we asked questions and answered questions. And then they all went out and talked to their personal legislators. And all of those patients then went and signed up in support of HB 63, which is really important. And let me tell you, HB 63 hearing was pretty amazing. <laughs> I was very, very, very pleased with how it went. Um, it did not start really late at night. It did not last for 12 and a half hours, as it, as it can sometimes. But there were a lot of really poignant testimony. And there were a lot of citizens that signed in support. So it's extremely important. If you don't have time and all you have is your lunch break, park in the garage, literally walk onto the grass so that you can be on the public Wi-Fi and you can sign in support of the bill. You can also come into the Capitol and sign in support of the bill. There's an opportunity to testify if you have that time. And also, we're going to be preparing more ways so that you can submit testimony to us in advance so that we can give that to the committees and binders. So that's what um, Heather, if you guys don't know, Heather Fazio, she works with Texans for Responsible Marijuana po Policy. She's kind of cool and not difficult to work with, so I love it. We traveled the state together and we're still friends, so it's great. Uh, but her and I put together committee binders so that we had information on all of the different talking points and topics that people try to bring up when it comes to keeping marijuana legal here in Texas. And we also included some really important testimony in there. Some. Um, ex-law enforcement, some retired judges, um, sitting DAs, sitting DAs, you guys, in office, literally being like, hey, what those officers just said, but no, but not that. <laughs> um, and just so you know, there were three officers that came and testified. One testified on the bill, which you can testify in support, against, or on the bill. So they didn't necessarily take a position. They were just talking about it. And then there were two that testified against the bill. And y'all, it was the typical reefer madness. Did you know that every drug addict ever has always done marijuana, according to these cops? And that it is the scourge of Texas. And we might all die because marijuana, okay? And I'm literally thinking like, hey, how about we close some rape cases, you guys? Kind of a bigger deal than marijuana. Just gonna leave that there. How many joints in an ounce? Oh, you guys, guess what? There's 40 joints in an ounce. If you didn't know, 40 joints. Inaccurate, as David Bass rebuttaled. In his, in his testimony, he's like, did you know that I illegally consume an ounce a month, which is actually 28 grams? <laughs> Sorry, that really amuses me greatly. So they gave the typical reefer madness. But guess what we had? Doctors from the Baker's um, Institute at Rice University. We had Republican Liberty Caucus of Texas. We had Republicans Against Marijuana Prohibition. Oh, and wait, it gets better, y'all. The chair of the Texas GOP party signed in support of this bill. Yeah! Yes, just going to flip it for y'all. So it was really amazing. We also had a judge that spoke. Um, I mentioned the sitting DA. There was an addiction specialist who actually worked at Southwestern University who came and rebuttaled the gateway theory that these uh, officers tried to promulgate. And I have to say I'm quite proud of the representatives that sat on the committee because not only did they ask really important questions about processes and, you know, you've got to work out all the kinks and make sure that we can have a bill that can functionally work, but they also pushed back on that reefer madness. Oh, um, did you say that everybody ever is addicted to marijuana? Where's your data? A representative said that. Where's your data? And he said, you guys, you guys, he <laughs> said, well, just my 30 ex years experience in the force. Oh, I'm sorry, is that anecdotal evidence that you're submitting to the committee? Is that anecdotal evidence? I'm sorry, what about all those patients with their anecdotal evidence? What was that? 
And there was another person who pointed out, I'm, I'm sorry, Anita, I might be going a little long. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'm just so invigorated by this hearing, you guys. I, I'm so invigorated, I forgot who I was going to talk about. But they were awesome, too. Oh, yeah, they were pointing out how these cops drove to the Capitol on taxpayer money paid gas in taxpayer-funded cars. Yeah. And they are getting paid by the hour to testify on bills that regulate our life. Yet, yet, these cops say, well, we're just enforcing the law. That's just our job. Well, then why don't you stay out of making the decision about what the law is and leave this to us and our legislators? But don't worry. They're the best opposition we can have because they're full of it. Um, Billy Seller says so shit. another thing I wanted to mention, <coughs> what comes next, right? HB 63, amazing hearing. It was left pending as is typical. So they will hear um, the bills and then in slates, in big batches, they will vote every week or two on a big batch of bills. So we anticipate that HB 63 will be up for a vote within one to two weeks depending on other priority legislation and what's being pushed. So we can expect two to three weeks before there's a vote, and then it'll move to calendars. So what's important for you guys to do now is to reach out to your personal legislator. Now listen, y'all, most of y'all probably from Austin. Are y'all from Austin? Raise your hand if you're from Austin. Okay. Raise your hand if you're not from Austin. Hi. I see some San Antonio, and I see some St. Colleen over here. So... If you're in San Antonio, I mean, if you're in Austin, you're probably good. You probably have legislators that are not, like, mean about marijuana policy. So you need to just call them and say, thank you, you're amazing. Sign on to HB 63, be a co-author. Okay, that's what we need out of every single one of y'all, is contacting your legislator to ask them to be a co-author. Because... What we need now is as many co-authors as possible to put a lot of pressure on this bill so that when it comes to committee, you already know that you have X number of co-authors. So when the bill was heard on Monday, there were five. Moody is the main author, and he had acquired several Republican and several Democrat co-authors. And because of the actions that we've done, your emails, your calls, the direct action we did today. If you were at the direct action today, please raise your hand. These guys went to all 181 offices and either gave them a thank you letter for being a co-author or dropped a please be a co-author handout with them. And let me tell you, because of these actions, we've gone from five to 19 co-authors. And for some perspective, last time we had 41, so we still have a little bit of work to do. So y'all put your, put your pressure on your personal representative. Moody uh, is Speaker Pro Tem, so he is second in the House, and he is working the committee. So at this time, we do not need to contact the committee members. He is working those. He ha he's formulating his votes, and he will let us know if and when we need to reach out to someone that's on the committee. So what's great about these legislators is they're really good at communicating with us what they need. So y'all make sure you stay tuned to what we're saying. So if we say contact your representative, contact your representative. If we say call the committee, call the committee. If we say, hey, it's time for a hearing, come and sign up to support the bill, please do it. Because let's keep in mind, these representatives... They have a lot of bills and a lot of things to do, and they don't need a 19-hour hearing. What they need is a power punch that no one can say no to, that's short, to the point, and then we can be like, oh, I'm sorry, did you see these 1,000 testimonies that we accumulated in this binder? And Nisha doesn't know, but she's going to be helping me with the thing. Surprise, Nisha! You're helping me with the thing. We also do these... <laughs> We also do these resource binders, and I have been accumulating different documents on all of the conditions that are laid out inside of the bill, and I'm going to have Nisha make sure that I have all the updated knowledge inside of there, and we're going to print it out when they say, but what about the science? I'm going to pull out a two-inch thick binder and say, I don't know, you tell me about the science. 
also about the science. They are doing scientific testing on cannabinoids here in Texas. Okay, moving on. You guys, action alerts on our website. Make sure you support medical marijuana, SB90 and HB 1365. I anticipate we'll probably have a hearing in the House in the next two to three weeks. So it's super um, okay, go to texasnormal.org, and if you go to the tab that says 86th legislature on top, you'll see all of the legislative items, all of the action alerts, and then you can Google who your representative is there as well. You Googleize it through our website, texasnormal.org. All right, so prepare for that in the next two to three weeks. So guess what? March is going to be busy, you guys. We're doing a lot of really cool things. In addition to all the legislative stuff that we're going to be preparing for, we're also going to be doing a few things um, for fun. You guys, we do things for fun sometimes. Like tonight's fun, but it's also like education, right? How amazing were those speakers? Cree and Nisha, thank you so much. I feel like I gained an IQ point, maybe. I don't know. You know, they say marijuana and IQ. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so Flamingo Cantina, is this, a, is this an amazing place? Would you like maybe come here again sometime? Oh, guess what? I have an opportunity for that. On March the 13th, we're going to be doing a kickoff party here, a Texas Normal Cannabis Kickoff Party. And it's going to be kicking off the South by Southwest that's going on. As you guys probably know, there's a cannabis business track that is going on. And it's going to be for like four days of marijuana talks. So if you don't have a ticket, you should probably get one. But ours is going to be free and open to the public, and it's going to be here on the 13th from noon to 6 p.m. We're going to have Nisha as one of our speakers, so you've already heard about why she's amazing. You should come and listen to her again. And we're also going to have Anita as one of our speakers. She's going to be focusing on CBD and how cannabinoids work. I don't know if uh, Anita mentioned this, but she's a microbiologist, so she's really into how all of that stuff works. She's also a veteran, so don't be fooled. She tough. She tough. Um, we're also going to be having Lisa Pittman, who's an attorney who now works in Colorado, but used to be here in Texas. And we're also going to have Dwight Clark. If you guys were around last session, you might recall Dwight worked for Senator Menendez's office and really spearheaded a lot of the work that we did on medical cannabis. He's amazing. I like him. And he now works for Vicente Satterberg. So he's going to come and talk to us a lot about hemp. And so I'm really excited about that. Also, there's going to be music afterwards, the Papachina and Ska, no, not Ska, Skank. <laughs> skank Roots Project. So we're going to get Skanky up in here or Danky. I don't know. You know, there's a patio, you guys. Tell your friends there's a patio. Also, we're going to be doing another lobby day because apparently we just cannot get enough. We're going to be doing a senior-focused lobby day. Yes. Come on, cotton tops. Let's do it. Sorry, I love all of you. You're all my grandma. Um, so senior lobby day is going to be on Monday the 25th. It's going to be in the morning again. It's going to be from 8.30 to 12.30. And we're going to be really focusing on reaching out to those legislators that, that they have in the district and making sure that they're signing on to the medical cannabis bills. And we'll be doing some other targeted actions as well. So seniors, come on and get some. And guess what? We'll give you caffeine. Don't worry. Um, 420 Science is going to sponsor coffee service. So we really appreciate them for that. And then we're going to be doing our annual veteran benefit. If you have not been before, we call it the Puff and Putt. Because golf and marijuana, that's why we call it that. Oh, I if get you didn't it. know. I oh, did you get it? it? Yeah. Ta da! Um, and it's at Willie Nelson's golf course. Yes. It's amazing. We're going to be having music and vendors. There's going to be a morning tea time and an afternoon tea time for golf. There's also going to be a disc golf competition. There will be uh, awards that are given. And if you have been before, you know that they are beautiful functional glass artwork pieces, a.k.a. a bong. You'll get a bong. Water pipe. 
Water oh, pipe. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. A water pipe. I didn't go. know we were in a head shop. My bad. I want to tell you guys also, though, about the music, because I have to say I'm pretty impressed at our lineup this year. So we've got a local band called the Troubadillos. Uh, oh, apparently some Troubadillo lovers up in here. Also, um, another local band called Scrapelli. Yes, you guys probably know them from doing our members mixer before, and they have done the Puff and Putt a few years ago, so they are amazing. We've got Matt Giles and his group. They're going to do a little threesome up there. Okay. Ow! And then, I don't have my glasses that I don't need any on, uh, on anymore. I can't see what I said. Lucas Johnson is going to be playing. He is a really young, amazing guitar player from out in the uh, Dripping Springs Briarcliff area. But wait, it gets better. We have a really good headliner. I don't know if you've heard of Vallejo. But they'll be headlining our event, so that in and of itself is worth the ticket right there. So I'm really excited about that. There will also be food there. We'll, we'll have food vendors as well as vendors of different merchant type of things. Um, we will be back here at the Flamingo Cantina on April 3rd. And Jamie Spencer will be our MC that night. He'll be setting the agenda. Okay, real quick, I want to do a poll of the, of the group. Raise your hand if it's your first meeting. Oh, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Raise your hand if you are a Texas Normal member. We appreciate you guys. You fund everything that we do. Thank you so much. Raise your hand if you are a board member for Texas Normal. These are the people that will help you get involved in what we're doing. They are amazing. Thank you for these people. It would not be done without them. Uh, for legit, you laugh. It is truth. I would like you to raise your hand if this is your first night being the MC. Yeah. It's literally a <laughs> Big round of applause for Anita. She's amazing. And I want to plug one thing for Miss Angela, who runs this Flamingo Cantina. She does Reggae Fest, just this little party here in Austin that's pretty amazing. And it's going to be over 420 weekend. So I hope that all of you guys will come out and support Angela as much as she has supported Texas Normal over the years. So on that note, I want to invite Anita back up to close the meeting. Thank you. Well, I actually thought Jax was going to close the meeting, but I guess meeting adjourned. I really do hope you guys had a wonderful evening. I look forward to seeing the new people come back out again. This is awesome. We just need to continue to keep the conversation going. Make it normal, right? It doesn't matter. This is We're talking about a plant, right? We're talking about nature. Let's make this the norm. So I just want to say thank you all for showing up. We're going to stick around here for a little while. If you want to join us upstairs, come hang out, come mingle. If you have any questions, we'll take care of them. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you for showing up.